On day one, I was a Charmander in an intense Pokemon battle with my trainer. My opponent rushed in with this powerful attack, knocking me back. Ah, man, I don't know if I can beat him. Of course you can. I believe in you, so you should too. Suddenly, our battle was interrupted by a loud flash of energy. And there, appearing above it all, was a strange looking Pokemon. All you Pokemon only know how to fight and destroy. Well, no matter. Once my mission is complete, you all will be disposed of. He angrily shot out another pulse of psychic energy that struck tons of nearby Pokemon. Because of this, they began to join him in destroying the entire area. And some even turned on their trainers. Gengar, what are you doing? Ah! It's like he's mind controlling them. I've never seen a Pokemon do something like this. We gotta go. I ran with Ash towards the exit, but the legendary Pokemon cut us off. No one gets away from you two. He blasted at Ash, causing him to collapse. No! Char Charmander, you must stop him. Make things right. Ash? Ash! Because of my scream, a huge blast of light shot down around me. And floating down before me was an elemental stone. Collect the Okay, I knew I didn't have any other choice, so I picked it up, causing me to change. I was now empowered with the multiple Terra types and was now an elemental Charmander. Whoa, what just happened to me and why? I looked up just in time to see the mind-controlled Pokemon had recovered. Uh Oh, on day two, I started to run away through the village streets and into a nearby forest. The mind-controlled Pokemon, they're right behind me. I then saw Mewtwo flying away through the skies. Now, on to the next village. Why is he doing this? I wasn't paying attention at all and almost fell off of a waterfall. Whoa! What the? Did I just shoot out electricity? But I had no time and saw that the mind-controlled Pokemon had surrounded me. Everyone, please snap out of it. But they didn't listen, hitting me over the waterfall. Ah! Ah! I fell in water and was freaking out, but realized, wait, water doesn't hurt me? Is it because of that orb? I slowly made my way out, just as I heard a sad whimper coming from nearby. <laughs> Hello? I pushed through the nearby brush and saw a small Eevee looking over another destroyed town. Ah! Ah! What are you? Don't hurt me! The Eevee ran off. What? Hurt you? Wait! I ran deep inside of the town until she cornered herself. Hey, look, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm sorry. I just thought that powerful Pokemon controlled you too. They came through and wiped out everything, including my trainer. I'm sorry. My trainer is gone too. Wait, you're not just some normal Charmander. You're elemental. How did you do that? That's what I'm trying to figure out myself. We then heard shouting coming from across the town. You imbecile! What's that about? As we crept closer to the shouting, I saw two scientists arguing outside of a lab. It was a failed experiment! Ha oh, man, the boss isn't gonna be so happy! Mewtwo is now out because of us! Mewtwo, they must know more about what's going on. Come on! We're going in there? Uh... Okay. On day four, sneaking quietly inside, Evie and I watched as the two scientists approached a room full of destroyed equipment. How could this have happened? How? We couldn't contain his power. He's just- Oh, shut it! Mewtwo was created by us, the first ever Pokemon made by humans. He was made to be controlled. Wait, Mewtwo was created by humans? But why does he hate Pokemon so much? As I was deep in thought, Eevee caught my attention. Hey, 
What's that? Down the hall was a room where a strange shard of water was being held. It kind of looks like that elemental orb from earlier. I ran up and grabbed the shard. But as I did this, alarms started to go off throughout the laboratory. And then my vision became blurry. Whoa, where am I? Before me was a godly looking Pokemon. Who are you? I am the very reason you have the elemental essence flowing within you. I am Arceus, the god of Pokemon. Wait, you're the one who gave me the orb? But why? Why me? A misguided force is beginning to grow. One that has been blinded by rage and betrayal. One that can cause the extinction of the entire world of Pokemon. Mewtwo. You must find more Terra Shards to empower yourself. And from the looks of things, you already found the first one. As he said this, I felt the water element flow within me. I gained five more hearts and was now a much stronger Charmeleon. With water blasters? Whoa. So with every Terra Shard I find, I get stronger. Hey, why? Why did you choose me out of all Pokemon out there? Find more shards! Ah! What the? I'm back in the facility. We really have to go now! An elemental Pokemon? What the heck is that thing? Oh, just shut up and get them! We began running through the halls with the scientists right behind us. But when I looked up, I realized I led us straight to a dead end. Aha! You know, if we capture you, we'd have the perfect Pokemon to get Mewtwo back under our control. Let's get him! The scientist threw out a powerful looking Pokemon right on. Without hesitation, it began to charge forward and attack. Oh no! Out of panic, I used my new water ability, hitting him head on and weakening him. I'm never going to get used to this. Ride on wildly charged again, but we dodged out of the way as he crashed into the sealed doorway. Come on, it's open, let's go! No! In his confusion, Evie and I slipped out and ran out of the lab. On day seven, the alarms of the laboratory faded behind us as we escaped into the wild. A Pokemon god chose me out of all Pokemon? No, it has to be a mistake. In my confusion, we kept going, only to find a clearing, which revealed a lost Terra Sanctuary. There were five elemental zones. The central fire and tropical water ones looked activated compared to the others. Wait, is this place connected to me and the elements? It seems like it. A perfect place for a home. I got to work building myself a house in the fire zone. Nice. I then found Evie standing around looking stressed. I... I can't decide where I want my home, but when I do, I will make one. Okay, sounds good. Just then, I noticed a blue duck was freaking out, running through my base. We're all gonna die, man! We're all gonna die! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, wait, what kind of Pokemon are you? I'm not, dude. I'm Fozo. Wait, your name is Fozo too? Oh. Okay, pal. Look here, Fozo number two. My home has been completely taken over by some Pokemon shooting lightning and electricity everywhere. Wait, really? Can you show me? Did you not just hear me, smart one? There's deadly bolts of lightning zipping around. Right, I know. Just show me. Okay, okay, fine. I'll show you, but then I'm bailing, you hear me? On day eight, I followed the blue duck until he brought me to a mountain range that was storming heavily. You really weren't kidding. Yeah, and it's all because of that thing. Looking up, I noticed a massive Pokemon at the peak of the mountain. He was electrocuting everything in the area. Must grow stronger. That electrode, it's out of control. 
Why is it doing this? Beats me, pal. I'd give him the good old one-two if I was a Pokemon, you know, but uh, I'm just a duck. What do you want me to do? Go use Splash on him? No, thank you. Anyways, uh, good luck. The duck left. Oh, by the way, you guys should buy the Fozo plush. It's the first link in the description, all right? That guy is weird. I began to head up the mountain to investigate further as lightning started to strike around me. Ah! While running for my life, I began dodging back and forth up the mountain to reach the peak. But as I was nearing the top, I ran into two electric type Pokemon. Uh-oh. My skin stronger. No, they're being mind controlled by... Yes, grow stronger. I looked up and flying above the mountain was Mewtwo. When you Pokemon are strong enough, you will finally be of use to me. In one powerful psychic attack, he caused a weaker Pokemon to faint. And as it did, he became stronger from it. Is he taking their power? On days 9 to 10, the Electrobuzzes noticed me and ran in to attack. But before they hurt me, I was pulled away in a flash of electricity. Ah! Where am I? I was now in a cave, and there with me was a Pikachu. You saved me? Yeah, and it seems like I was just in time. Wait. Are you? Yeah, I'm different. And I'm looking for more Terra Shards. Then you came to the right place. Eh, just the wrong time. Follow me. I did as they said, as Pikachu led me into an open cavern. And there in the center was the electric Terra Shard. Whoa, how did you know about this? You know all those crazy Pokemon outside? That's my crew. We came here with the Shard to take on Mewtwo. But... We were too weak. I was wrong and the only one that made it out before he took control of their minds. I'm sorry to hear that. Look, I want to help stop him and do what I can, but I can't do anything without those shards. Sounds like you're our best bet. With Pikachu's approval, I went over and grabbed the Terra Shard, causing my electric Terra type to be empowered. I gained five more hearts and was now a Charmeleon with water cannons and a Pikachu tail. Sweet! Just then, the cavern wall exploded to reveal the giant Electrode. On days 11 to 12, the Electrode rolled into attack. Come on, big guy. Don't make us do this. We had no choice as he began blasting the entire cavern with his powers. But thankfully, I now had electricity flowing within me, allowing me to use my new move. Electro Ball. Whoa, this is awesome. The two of us kept working together, weakening him with every single attack. And with one more, he was taken down. <laughs> Mewtwo, he's planning something, and you'll never see it coming. Great, that doesn't sound too good. Hey, I'm sorry about your crew. Seems like it had to be done, and you heard him. Mewtwo is planning something. It's probably gonna be something big, something that no Pokemon has ever had to face before. We better be ready for anything. Oh, a nice tail you got there. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks. We exited the mountainside as I saw a strange Pokemon floating through the air, but it disappeared? Huh? What was that? What? What? Who caused this? And how? On days 13 to 14, we made it safely back to our base, and I noticed that the lightning part of my home was now activated. Sweet. I helped Pikachu build up his very own home inside of the terrain, and as I finished, my vision became blurry again as I was pulled away. I see that you have found yet another shard. I'm never getting used to that. I looked around and realized I was in the lab where Mewtwo was created. Yes, it's true. Mewtwo is the first ever Pokemon made by humans. Together, we watched as a weak Mewtwo emerged from a testing tube. Mewtwo listened to the scientists as they worked and overheard their plans. They were going to use him as a weapon 
only meant for power and destruction. So he destroyed everything. Mewtwo burst from his tube with a powerful psychic blast, nearly destroying the whole lab in one hit. So that's why he wants to get rid of us. He thinks Pokemon are just weapons for destruction, but that's not true. Can't you show him that? Can't you stop this? I thought you were a god. Yes, but my power must not be abused. I have chosen you to not only show Mewtwo why his beliefs are misled, but to also show him who Pokemon really are. But what do I do? His plans only grow, and soon enough, you will see the scale of his actions. On days 15 to 16, my vision came back, and I was still standing in my base. There you are! Look! Standing beside her was the grass-type Pokemon, Bulbasaur. Wow! So an elemental-type Pokemon really does exist? Perfect! We need your help. We? With what? He brought me out of my base and into a dense jungle. It didn't take long for us to reach a clearing full of other Bulbasaur and a large majestic tree, but it looked unhealthy. Our grand Venusaur once watched over the elder tree until he was taken. Because of this, it's dying. Who took him? On the outskirts of the jungle, he showed me a train station that led off into the distance. Some trainers in weird looking suits took him and brought him on a train in there. But if you do manage to bring him back safely, we have possession of the grass terra shard. I'm sure he would give it to you. On days 17 to 18, I walked into the train station, scouting around to see what I could learn about the trainers. Ah, can't wait to be back at Team Rocket HQ. Did he say Team Rocket? They must be who took Venusaur. I snuck closer to the last train, where I noticed the conductor was checking tickets. Ticket, please. Enjoy your ride. Ticket, please. Guess I'm gonna need one too. While sneaking around, I heard an announcement sound off. The train will be leaving in two minutes. Oh no, I gotta hurry. That's when I saw a ticket machine across the terminal. But I don't have any money. I'm just a Pokemon. Looking around to make sure no one was watching me, I used my new electric type on the machine, causing it to drop loads of tickets. You know, this place had it coming anyway. Anyways, I picked one up and made it to the conductor. Ticket, please. Enjoy your pay. Wait a minute. You're a member of Team Rocket? Uh, yes. <laughs> You know what? I don't get paid enough for this. Go on ahead. Thanks. On days 19 to 21, the train stopped at its final destination, the Team Rocket HQ. I stepped off of the train to see their entire underground hub. This place is huge. They must be a much larger team than I thought. What an absolute score finding that Venusaur, Jesse. I ran and hid as two trainers got off the train behind me. Right you are, James. Just wait until the boss sees. Oh no, those two have the Venusaur. I've got to follow them. Quietly keeping pace behind them, I followed them throughout the halls until I saw a large battery source I had never seen. That must be powering this entire base. After dodging a few other members walking around, we reached the office on the top floor and there waiting for them was the boss of of Team Rocket, Giovanni. So, which Pokemon have you brought me this time? Here you go, boss. Let me go! No! Silence! You two, this is not enough. Not enough? B -b boss I, I mean, sir, we- Do not talk back to me! This organization is supposed to be the best of the best! We need the strongest Pokemon in order to do that and regain control of Mewtwo. But this one, dispose of it. It's useless to me. What? No! On days 22 to 26, I didn't hesitate and ran straight into the office between everyone and Venusaur. Stay back. What? An elemental Pokemon? This is exactly what we need. Giovanni sent out a very powerful looking Pokemon. 
Uh-oh. It began to attack ruthlessly, and I could barely keep up. Thankfully, with my electric Terra-type, I was able to move much quicker in my upgraded form, but my electricity didn't hurt him at all. Venusaur then stepped up and hit him back with his own powers. This is pointless. You Pokemon are made for one thing, to do what we command. We gotta get out of here. Come on. We made a break for the door when suddenly with the push of a button, Giovanni trapped us in cages. Ah, what the? You two aren't going anywhere. Let us go. I have to get out of here to stop what Mewtwo's doing. <laughs> Why stop Mewtwo when it can be under me? In time, it will be my number one pet, and you will be the key to that. Gas then started to emerge from my cage, causing my vision to blur. On days 27 to 29, I awoke out of my cage. My vision came back to me in some kind of battle arena. Ah, my head. But wait, Venusaur, where is he? I looked up and there above the arena was Giovanni. Begin! From out of nowhere, a Pokeball flew into the arena, releasing Eradicate. They ran in trying to attack me, but with Electro Ball, I was able to take them down. Yes. Keep getting stronger, my pet. I gotta get out of here. Now, looking around, I saw a tall doorway underneath where Giovanni was. I made a break for it and tried to blast the door with my electricity, but it wouldn't budge. No! As I said, you aren't going anywhere! Giovanni was then cut off by a loud explosion. And there, in the doorway, were the Team Rocket members from earlier. Wait, are you guys freeing me? Yes, we are. Maybe then the boss man will think twice before talking to us like that. What the? Capture them! Alarms started to blare through the complex as I began to escape with Jesse and James. Thank you guys so much. Oh, don't mention it. Now go save your friend. He's in there. I ran into the room and found Venusaur still trapped in his cage. Come on, we have a train to catch. On days 30 to 32, Venusaur ran behind me as we made our way through the halls of Team Rocket's base until I found something terrifying. They had rooms full of Pokemon locked in cages only to be used for the organization's plans whenever they pleased. This place, it's horrible. No wonder Mewtwo thinks Pokemon are evil because of teams like this. I thought back to what Ash told me all of those days ago. Believe in myself. I know what I have to do. Venusaur, go get to the train now. What are you going to do? I'm not leaving without taking this place down. Now go. We split up as I quickly freed these Pokemon and ran back to the room with the core battery. This is for all of the Pokemon. I used all of the moves I learned to blast the core, destroying it. Because of this, the whole building started to malfunction and explode. Uh, it's about time I get out of here. Running as fast as I could, I barely made it back onto the train and watched as Rocket HQ was destroyed. On days 33 to 35, we finally made it back to the Elder Tree with all of the Bulbasaurs. The Grand Venusaur took his place at the foot of the tree. Thank you so much for your help. Of course, anytime. I believe I owe you something. With that, Venusaur's presence made the Elder Tree begin to shake and let out a magical aura. The tree was now healed and its trunk opened up to reveal a path below. Whoa. Once inside, I saw an ancient room where the roots of the tree held up the grass terra shard. I went up and grabbed it, causing my grass terra type to empower me. And I evolved. I was now an elemental Charizard with a Venusaur plant on my back. Awesome. I wonder what grass type moves I can learn. As I was deep in thought, Eevee came running into the tree. There you are. 
You gotta see this. Something is very wrong. On days 36 to 39, I went with Evie as she brought me to a coastline where I could see a remote island out in the distance. I I was just out here gathering food and, and, and I saw Mewtwo. He flew straight towards the island. Well, whatever he's planning can't be good. We gotta get over there now. With that, I realized that I could now use my fully evolved form to fly. I picked up Evie as we flew across the water and over to the island. We need to find out what he's planning. It didn't take long for us to find a tunnel entrance that led deep below the surface. Hold up. I don't know about this. It's gonna be okay. You just stay here, okay? And I'll be back. All right. Please be careful. Once I flew down the tunnel, I came to an opening where mind-controlled Pokemon were fighting each other in caged battlefields? What are they doing? The stronger of the pairs would faint the other and grow stronger because of it. But that's when Mewtwo teleported in and eliminated the winner, making himself grow even stronger. Wait, he's making them stronger so that he can absorb their strength and gain even more power. As I said this, I was thrown back from an attack as Mewtwo teleported right in front of me. Wait, it's you, that Charmander I saw all those days ago. Yeah, you killed my trainer, and you've hurt lots of Pokemon. It's what I have to do. This species is a destructive disease. You're a monster! In my rage, I used my new grass type move, hitting Mewtwo back. You see, the humans, they don't deserve this kind of power. So, taking Pokemon, their weapons, out of the equation is the best way to do it. He launched an attack back at me that knocked me against the wall. Ah! I tried to hit him again, but this time, he teleported away. He's so strong. Look, I know what happened. Those scientists, they were so wrong to do that to you. But that doesn't mean all humans are evil. It doesn't mean that all of us Pokemon are just weapons. Out of nowhere, I was blasted again and was left on one heart. I didn't ask to be brought into this world. I didn't ask for any of this. I didn't ask for the power I have now. But that's not the point. It's not about where you came from, but what you choose to be now. Silence! When these Pokemon are strong enough, I will take them down and grow stronger every time. No one will stand in the way of my mission. He was about to unleash another attack and completely take me out. But suddenly, a flash of psychic energy teleported me away. And what the... <laughs> That Pokemon, I swore, I've seen it before. But why did it save me? On days 45 to 47, Eevee came running up to me. What happened? Did you teleport us out? No, it was someone else. I'm just so glad you're safe. I'm sorry I didn't come down and fight with you. I'm not the most decisive person. Hey, that's okay. Not for me. Not for an Eevee. I can choose almost any type I want to evolve into. But that's really scary. One type for the rest of my life? I, I just, I don't know. Listen to me. Whatever decision you make, it'll be the right one, okay? Just know that I believe in you. And you should too. I looked out over to our base and saw that the grass type zone was now activated as well. Wow, this place is really coming together. Thunderbolt! Whoa, is Pikachu in trouble? I ran out and saw him locked in battle with the ice type Pokemon Mamoswine and saw that it was mind controlled. I ran in closer and saw that Pikachu's attacks weren't doing anything. Knowing this, I tried to use my new grass type move Leaf Blade and it actually hurt him, but he hit me back with crazy ice type attacks that hurt even more. We gotta knock him out of this. What? Ow. Let me try something. I then focused my power at his head and used Flamethrower. My attack was super effective and broke him out of Mewtwo's control. Wait, I actually freed him. 
Where am I? Last thing I remember was Mewtwo. It's okay, Mewtwo. He had you under his control, but you're safe now. Oh, thank you so much. Wait, I need to check on my family. He quickly turned around and started to run off into the tundra. Okay. Now that that's over, come on, Pikachu. We gotta find some more Terra Shards. Wait, are you talking about a Terra Shard? Yeah, you know about those? Oh, yeah. My home is near a stadium that boasts about giving the shard to the most powerful Pokemon. But it's not so easy to get to. That's all right. Can you show me where? I followed him until he led me right into a crystalline forest. And there was a huge ice maze. Only the best and strongest trainers can reach the stadium. And to prove it, you must complete that maze. Great. On days 53 to 56, I charged headfirst into the maze as I began to pass by tons of different trainers. They all looked very lost. And one even... Ah, an elemental Charizard! Wow, rude. You know what? I have an idea. Using my wings, I flew up and above the maze where I could see the stadium all the way in the center. Oh, come on! So not fair! Yeah, well, life's not fair! Finally, I landed in the center to see the ice type stadium. The Terra Shard must be in here. Once inside, I saw more trainers standing around. And there on the center battlefield was the ice type gym leader, Wolfric. Welcome one and all to my Pokemon Stadium tournament. To all my ice type lovers out there, you've come to the right place because today the winner will Take home my newest possession, the Ice Terra Shard! There above his ice throne was the Terra Shard. All right, I guess I just have to win this thing then. On days 57 to 59, my opponent stood across the battlefield from me. I don't care how strong you look, you're going down. The trainer sent out a small ice type Pokemon. It ran forward and tried to attack, but I easily took him out with flamethrower. I'm sorry. Wow, that was amazing. Straight to the finals. Wolfric jumped down and took the place of the trainer on the opposite side. And your opponent is me. Go, Avalog. Out came Avalog, a massive iceberg Pokemon. Whoa. His immense size shook the entire stadium as he stomped around, causing massive chunks of hail to crush down on me. I tried my best to fight back, but he was so strong. How do I defeat him? I then noticed a deep fall around the battlefield. That's it. Hey, you, come and get me. Avalog, finish him with double edge. Avalog charged forward right towards me. Wait, wait. Now, I flew up at the last possible second as Avalog dashed off the edge, causing him to faint. Yes, I won. What? Impossible. On day 60 to 63, as the winner, I can now take the Ice Terra Shard. Because of this, I was now empowered. I gained five more hearts and learned the move Avalanche. Awesome. My vision then began to fade as I found myself back in the celestial landscape. I am quite pleased with your progress, Charizard. You found so many of the Terra Shards. Yeah, now I think I have a real chance against Mewtwo. No, for there is one shard more powerful than the rest. The Stellar Terra Shard. This will allow you to not only have control of the elements, but contains the same powers Mewtwo himself wields, if you are able to retrieve it in time. Whoa, well, how do I get it? Suddenly, my vision shifted to an ancient jungle spanning as far as my eyes could see and flying above the trees, that Pokemon, the one that saved me before. That Pokemon is named Mew. They were the very first Pokemon to ever exist. Does that mean? Correct. Mewtwo was made after Mew. It is the rarest Pokemon to find and the hardest one to gain its trust. Find Mew, and you will find the Stellar Terra Shard.
On day 64 to 68, my vision came back to me. Looking around, I saw that I was in my base and my ice type zone was activated. My entire home was now 100% elemental, but I still need to find Mew. I have to find that jungle. Did you say Mew? That Pokemon's only a myth. No, it's real. And they are the only key to stopping Mewtwo. I believe you. We just have to hurry. Too many Pokemon are being mind controlled. It's horrible. I know, Eevee. And we need to stay safe here. I took the time to build up a defensive wall around our entire base. This entire place needs to be kept safe. I don't know when or even if I'll be coming back. Hey, I don't know about Mew, but I do know about an old jungle that you might be interested in. It's called the Sacred Leaves. On days 69 to 73, all of us made our way to the ancient jungle. But as we drew close, I noticed that the entrance, it was partially destroyed. Everyone, stay close. We headed inside until we came upon a waterfall shrine. And there in the ruins was a horde of mind-controlled Pokemon with Mewtwo hovering above them. Keep searching! That pesky Pokemon has to be around here somewhere. Oh no, they must know that Mew is here. If he absorbs their power too, I won't be able to find the Stellar Shard. And from the looks of things, he's getting stronger. Everyone, let's split up. We all went our separate ways throughout the forest, searching for Mew. Come on, come on, where are you? But then I heard it. <laughs> I saw the small Pokemon floating in front of me and through the trees. And following its trail, I saw an ancient temple. Whoa. It drifted inside and disappeared. Hey, wait up. On day 74 to 77, I ran into the temple chasing after Mew, but was cut off by a temple guardian. Whoa. No Pokemon allowed in this temple. Wait, but there's one R inside <laughs> the guardian began to attack with large swinging arms and energy beams i had to defend myself but quickly realized that this thing isn't a pokemon i can't land a strong hit on him then one powerful swing of the guardian's arm took me down to low health I can't die, not now. Hey! I looked back, and there at the entrance of the temple was Evie. Leave my friend alone! As she said this, she evolved into Umbreon. She let out a powerful dark pulse attack, causing the guardian to flinch. Awesome! I guess I made the right decision. Now go, I'll hold this thing off. Thank you, Eevee. With that, I was able to pass as Eevee was keeping the Guardian at bay. On day 78 to 80, it didn't take long for me to reach a chamber with old carvings on its walls. This place really is sacred, huh? Mew? You, you've been following me and you even helped. Why? I'm not sure why, but you seem different. Well, look, I need your help, okay? I need the Stellar Shard. <gasps> No. What? Mew blasted me back with a psychic attack. Every being on this planet, they've only wanted me for my power. I don't just want it, Mew. I need it in order to stop Mewtwo. He has to be stopped for everyone's sake. But Mew flew down the opposite hallways deeper into the temple. Not again. Wait. I ran after them only to stop just before a large pit. Taking up the entire hallway in front of me was a course of the temple's traps. And at the other end was Mew, floating next to the sacred Stellar Shard. I want to believe you are different than Mewtwo, different from all other Pokemon or humans I've met before. So prove it. If you can get past the sacred ritual of the Stellar Shard, then you may have it. On days 81 to 85, I began to jump and fly between platforms as the temple's defenses tried to stop me. As I progressed, it was getting harder and harder, but I knew that I had to make it. Make things right. Ash, I have to make him proud. Yes, I did it. Now go on. 
take the Stellar Shard. I picked up the Stellar Shard, causing all of the elemental Terra types within me to be empowered. I gained 10 more hearts and now had the Psychic Terra ability. Yes! My vision then shifted and there was Arceus. Well done. You have collected all of the Terra Shards, but I'm afraid Mewtwo has already grown too powerful. No, but we have to try. All of these Pokemons, all of their trainers, they deserve to live in peace. No matter what, I have to try to stop him. Have you considered why I chose you all those days ago? It's because you showed care. You showed love. And even in the darkest of times, like right now, that will always overcome any obstacle in your path. As he said this, there appearing in front of me was Ash? It's me. I always knew you were capable of great things. If anyone can do this, it's you. Thank you. Thank you for always believing in me. On days 86 to 90, Mew and I were running back through the temple. When we ran, you did it! Yeah, all thanks to you. Now, come on. Let's find Pikachu and get out of here. But as we ran out of the temple, we were blasted back by a volley of attacks. I looked up and waiting for us was Mewtwo and the horde of mind-controlled Pokemon. Where do you think you're going? I wanted you to meet our newest member. You must grow stronger no he has pikachu you think just because you've acquired all the terra shards that i'm going to bow down to you i bow to no one and in a couple days you will see that pikachu a thunderbolt came flying towards us when suddenly we were back at base phew that was a close one Oh, no. No, 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 no. Th they got Pikachu! I know. We have to figure this out. We can't just let Mewtwo get away with this. He said in just a couple of days, we're going to see. Wait, in a couple days? The Grand Pokemon Tournament is taking place. So that means it could fit a lot of trainers and their Pokemon. So Mewtwo's planning on taking down all of those Pokemon. If he does, he will never be stopped. We have to get there. Now, on days 95 to 99, the three of us just made it into the Grand Stadium. In time to see all of the trainers and Pokemon everywhere. The battle for the finals is about to get underway. You don't want to miss. Suddenly, the giant screen of the stadium exploded open as Mewtwo and his horde rushed in. In, attacking everyone in sight. Go and them all and grow even stronger. We have to stop them. Way ahead of you. Come on. We jumped into battle, fighting off all of the mind controlled Pokemon. Umbreon and Mew fought together to protect the trainers as I made my way down to the center battlefield. <laughs> nice, Pikachu. Must grow. Stronger! No! I used Flamethrower and blasted Pikachu away from Wolfric. Snap out of it! But he didn't listen and charged at me with everything he had. We began to fight as his electric attacks would nearly shock me out of the air. But I couldn't let him down. Using my Earth-type attack, I hit Pikachu all the way to the ground. What? I I'm free! Thank you! Thank me later. I have to stop Mewtwo before it's too late. On day 100, I was face to face with Mewtwo. Think you can stop me? My mission? I'm doing what's best for this world. No, you're not Mewtwo. And if you can't see that, then I'm going to stop you. The two of us were locked in battle. His overpowered psychic attacks were no joke and would cut away at my heart. But I wasn't giving up and used every attack I learned throughout my journey. Ah! You are just proving my point. You are a weapon. Your stupid trainer raised you to be this way. No, Ash taught me how to care for others and to believe in myself. I used an elemental blast with all of the Terra types to blast the Mewtwo across the battlefield. Ugh, Pokemon are meant to battle and destroy. 
not care for others. Just because you weren't raised to believe that doesn't mean it's true. We are not all like that. No. No! Mewtwo rushed forward in his rage. I'm sorry. With one final elemental blast, he fainted. And because of this, all of the mind-controlled Pokemon returned back to normal. And this entire species could now live in peace. On day one, I spawned in as a baby Charmander right outside of the nearest town. There were vast Pokemon roaming throughout the nearby hills with lots of different trainers running around and battling one another. Whoa, this is awesome. But out of nowhere, flooded in an army full of strange looking water Pokemon, all led by their enormous Gyarados leader. They all started to flood in and destroy everything in sight, feigning all of the nearby Pokemon. No! Everybody run! The trainers tried their best to escape, but each of them got captured one by one. Why is this happening? Yes! Yes! The water Pokemon are in charge now, and everyone will truly see our power! Water blasted from the sky, and I thought none of us were going to make it, when suddenly, my older brother Charizard flew straight towards him. Stop this now! The two of them battled each other in the sky, each shooting out incredibly powerful abilities. My brother was amazing. I think he's gonna win! Take this! The Gyarados shot out the most powerful water attack that I'd ever seen, shooting my brother right down in front of me. Brother! Fozo, uh, leave! Find Pikachu at once! He knows how he can get stronger and stop this. But how? Before my brother could say anything else, another water attack was shot down, fainting him for good. No! <laughs> that the Grand Charizard is down, nothing will stop us! Now, take out that little flame! On day two, I was doing my best trying to lose the water Pokemon. We can't let him escape. It wasn't long until we came across a large tree connecting two valleys. Wait, I have an idea. I ran to the start of the tree and knew as a Charmander, I had a fireball attack, Ember. I used it, shooting the tree all over. I did my best navigating through the fire to reach the other side of the tree. But the longer we were on it, the weaker and weaker the trunk became. Come on, just a little longer. I jumped and made it to the other side. And as I did, the tree trunk snapped and fell fully down the cliff. That was close. I thought I was safe, but a water blastoise landed right behind me. Oh no. You are a threat to Gyarados and not going anywhere. I thought I was done for, but in a huge surge of lightning shot in Pikachu. Pika? On day three, Pikachu started to defend me. He shot out extremely powerful lightning attacks. Thunderbolt! Blastoise fought back though with attacks of his own. It was a close battle, but Pikachu was able to blast him one final time, shooting him off the ledge. Whoa, you, my brother, he told me to find you too. I know, it looks like the water Pokemon have begun their attack. Follow me, quick. I followed Pikachu until we reached a large ancestral room with stone that had strange writing throughout it. And in the center lied a fire stone. Pikachu shot me with lightning, knocking me into the stone. Because of this, my body started to change. I gained five more hearts and was now in an upgraded form, turning me into Charmeleon. Whoa! There are four more of these out in the world, each making any fire Pokemon stronger. This isn't the first time the water Pokemon and Gyarados have attacked. Why? Why is he doing this? Apparently, he has a very dark past. One that would turn any Pokemon into where he is at today. But it has been told that a fire Pokemon would emerge and his flame would burn hotter than the sun itself, enough to evaporate even the fiercest waves. A fire Pokemon? But our number one weakness is water. Which is why Gyarados will be your toughest battle. Well, 
they fainted my brother and kidnapped those trainers. I will do whatever it takes to put an end to them. Just then, the cave started to shake and water started to leak throughout the walls. Oh no, we gotta get out of here. On day four, Pikachu and I ran through the cave while water started to fill up around us. It wasn't long until we reached a large pool of water, preventing us to get to the exit. I am definitely not touching that. We're trapped. Just then, I had a surge of power within me, causing me to unleash my new dragon's breath attack. Whoa, I have an idea. I use it on the water, creating a cobblestone bridge for us to cross. Come on. With that, the two of us were barely able to make it. Phew, that was close. I then looked up, only to see that we were inside a beautifully hidden valley. Whoa. This seems like a safe spot to hide from the water Pokemon. Agreed. From there, I went out and got enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. I then made both Pikachu and I our very own fire-themed Pokemon Center. Now, if we need healing, we will know where to go. We will need it. This Gyarados isn't like the other ones. He is much stronger. I tried to fight him once, thinking I can take him down easily, but it ended in me losing and him taking my trainer, Ash. I will do whatever I can to save him. Don't worry. I promise I will do whatever I can to help. Just then, I heard explosions sound off and looked throughout the horizons, only to see a large air balloon? What is that? On day five, I followed the noises until I saw a clearing, revealing a bunch of Bulbasaurs. They were being attacked and captured by two strange-looking trainers? Yes! We have to bring all of these to the boss. Anything for Team Rocket. Team Rocket? Hey, knock it off! I went in and attacked the trainers, setting them on fire. Whoa, a Charmeleon. We must have you. The girl threw a Pokeball, revealing a large poison type, Arbok. Oh no. It began to shoot out deadly poison attacks at me. I did my best trying to fight back, shooting my new Dragon Breath ability every chance that I could. But the Arbok was just way too strong. Is this how I'm gonna go out? Stay away from us. The last Bulbasaur, though, jumped in and whipped at the Arbok with a strong attack. With the two of us combined, we were able to fully faint the poison Pokemon. Rude! We will be back. You'll regret this. Thanks for standing up for me. Those water Pokemon came by and flooded my home. Then that evil Team Rocket attacked us shortly after. Of course. I'm doing what I can to stop Gyarados for all trainers and Pokemon. But I have to get stronger first. Stronger? Well, I may know of a place that'll help you. The Pokemon Stadium. On day six, Bulbasaur led me into a beachy area, heading straight towards a Pokemon Stadium? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. It wasn't long until we were cut off by a large, taken over tropical town. There was a huge castle towering over everything, with Gyarados himself flying around it. Yes, work! You stupid traitors have used us Pokemon to do your bidding for too long! Now it's my turn! We had to carefully sneak across the town in order to reach the stadium. We can't get caught! While we were sneaking, I noticed multiple trainers that were forced to help build up the Gyarados' empire. This is awful! As I was distracted, a water guard spotted me. Intruder! Oh no, run! We started to run while the Pokemon chased right after us until we both ran over loose ground, causing us to fall deep below the surface. Ah! Was that a Charmeleon? Yes, it was. Ah! It must be fainted immediately. I cannot let that fire Pokemon prophecy come true. Start searching for him. On day seven, Bulbasaur and I landed deep inside a mysterious red tunnel system. Ah, my head. We both looked forward and saw blue lights coming from the distance. Wait, this is it. I followed him only to reveal a large main stadium room. Whoa, high up above the main stadium rested the Firestone. That's what I need. Ah, 
Ah, I'm guessing you're another runaway. I've been getting a ton. A lot of homes are being destroyed by those water types. No, I'm here to get that Firestone, though. Sorry, pal. Only the one who enters and wins this tournament will be given that stone. But there may be a way you can enter yourself. How? The Monferno jumped down. I love putting on a show, but I can't do that without a microphone. Some guy came by and stole mine. If you go and get it back, I'll enter you in the tournament. On day eight, I followed Monferno's directions on my own until I reached a large maze. What is this place? I turned, only to see a Jigglypuff singing to himself with a microphone. Hey, I need that. No way! I love to sing, and this microphone is now mine! The Jigglypuff from there got up and started to run through the maze. Hey! Get back here! I chased after it, and as I did, I heard his singing echoing throughout the walls and even came across some of his melodies. I'm starting to feel tired. I have to keep searching! I followed the melodies until I reached the center of the maze where Jigglypuff was waiting on a performing stadium. La, 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 la. Enough! I charged in and started to fight him with my fire abilities, but he retaliated with more melody attacks. I was about to fall asleep, but thankfully, I shot out an ability right at the microphone. This caused him to drop it. Ha <laughs> ha! This is mine. Whatever, take it! See if I care! On days 9 to 10, I brought the microphone straight back to Monferno. Oh yeah! This is what I'm talking about! Alrighty, folks, next up, Charmeleon versus our toughest opponent yet. Wait, what? I made my way to the center of the arena and revealed in front of me was a way stronger fire Pokemon, Arcanine. The winner of this will receive the Firestone. Begin! Arcanine rushed towards me and began to shoot out fire. Ah! I fought back, but I could tell that we were even matched. Hey, I don't want to faint you. Well, I want that Firestone. This is a tough battle, folks. The winner can be anyone at this point. Come on. I have to win. Just then, an explosion sounded on the top of the arena, revealing the water Pokemon and Gyarados. Oh no. A water shot was blasted down, fully fainting Arcanine. Where is the Charmeleon? On days 11 to 12, Gyarados and his army of water Pokemon began to flood in throughout the entire stadium. They would attack anyone with their powerful water attacks. Oh no, I have to get the Firestone. I ran over in a chaos and was able to grab it. This caused me to grow and my tail flame to burn even brighter. I gained five more hearts and learned a new move, Fire Fang. Ah, stay away! I looked over and saw that a Krabby had cornered my friends. They need my help! I ran over and used my new attack on the Krabby. Ah, he fainted with just one hit. Whoa, I am getting stronger. Not for long! There, in the center of the stadium, was Gyarados. Stop this, Gyarados! Let all of the Pokemon and trainers go! No! Not until my plans are complete! All of you and these stupid trainers have looked down on me and my previous form like I was some kind of joke! Even my own trainer abandoned me! But now, I will be in control of them all! I will be the strongest Pokemon by getting rid of the rest! Monferno rushed into attack and hit him with Fire Punch. Get out of here, you two, now! Bulbasaur and I did as he said and ran out of the arena just in time to see Monferno faint to Gyarados' Hydro Pump. No! On days 13 to 14, we barely made it back to base after escaping from the horde of water Pokemon. Oh, there you are. I was worried sick. Get situated, and when you're ready, I found out some useful information. Sounds good. I used my tools to gather enough materials to build Bulbasaur his very own grass-type home. Wow, you made it look so easy. Thanks so much. Of course.
course. We gotta stick together. I then ran over to Pikachu and I's home. So, you know the professor, right, Fozo? The what? Professor Oak, he is a world-renowned Pokemon professor, and he may know more about these Firestone locations. Great! We have to find him then. That's just the thing. I went out looking for him myself and, well, why don't I show you myself? On days 15 to 16, I followed Pikachu to Professor Oak's laboratory, only to see that it was almost completely destroyed, with water all throughout its floors. What happened here? By the looks of it, the water types have found him first. Oh, this can't be good. Help! Uh, what was that? We ran towards the noise to see an opening into a ravine where Professor Oak was standing on a boulder in the distance. There he is! Hey, we need your- Wait, young one, look! This place is swarming with diglets! I looked out and saw a ton of diglets digging up and back down through the floor. Diglet! Dig! I noticed there were still some platforms made of rock to reach the professor. Just stay right there. I'll save you. Be careful. They will trap you in the earth if you get too close. I started to jump between the rocks and made my way towards him. I then felt the rocks begin to move below me as Diglets rose from the ground and grabbed at me. Ah! Stop that! I used my dragon's breath and sprayed them down, scaring them off as I was finally able to jump to the boulder with the professor. My, my, you are one brave Charmeleon. Why would you risk yourself to save me? We really need your help. On days 17 to 18, we went back to the lab with Professor Oak, and he looked around at all of his damaged equipment. Oh dear, with all those water Pokemon attacked, I barely made it out alive. It looks like they either destroyed or stole all my research. Wait, they stole research? But why? Professor Oak turned my attention to a set of screens that were the only ones still working in the lab. Well, I can't tell for sure, but if I had to guess. They stole my research on Pokemon immunity. That doesn't sound good. The professor walked over to a chest and pulled out a map. The coordinates on this map should lead you to where another Firestone is. And by giving you this, can I ask you to help me build a new laboratory? You have a deal, Professor Oak. As I was about to reach the coordinates, I came across a large gap, and the only bridge that seemed to cross it was blocked by a giant sleeping Pokemon? Great! How am I supposed to get across this? That guy ain't waking up anytime soon, pal! I looked over to see a colorful flower creature on the side of the bridge. This Pokemon right here is a Snorlax, and he won't wake up for anything except the sound of a Poke Flute. I could have told you that. Oh yeah? But do you know where it is, Smarty Pants? Didn't think so! All right, well, can you take me there then? The plant agreed, and we split up while the others headed back to base. Oh, poor little Charmeleon. Can't get what you want so easily. Now you know how it feels, and soon enough, when you least expect it, we'll snatch you right up! On days 19 to 21, I followed the plant through the forest trees until I saw a ledge high up on a hillside, and there was the Pokey Flute. There it is! I ran through the clearing to get it, but there was this huge flower, and it began to attack me? Ah! <laughs> get tricked, you stupid Firestarter! The mutant flower began to swat at me with its vines from the ground, and it would constantly try and hold me still. I fought using all of my fire type attacks at my disposal, but it just kept shooting out powerful attacks, and even bugs would come and try to bite at me. Don't you know? Fire beats grass! Ah! With another powerful fire fang attack, I was able to take the flower down. I did it! Now, as for you... <laughs> <laughs> huh, that's what I thought? I wasted no time running up and grabbing the pokey flute and made my way back to the bridge. So, do I just... As I played the flute, Snorlax began to wake up. <sighs> Hey, you got any food? What? No. Dang it. 
Bye, friend. Bye, buddy. The Snorlax wandered off in search of food, but with him out of the way, I saw that far beyond and across the bridge was the next Firestone. Perfect. On days 22 to 26, I ran towards the stone and was just about to pick it up when suddenly, prepare for trouble. Make it double. Team Rocket, what are you two doing here? We came for the sweet taste of revenge. Go, Weezing! Oh no! We began to fight, but Weezing's attacks were no joke. He would use poison type attacks to knock down my heart. Yeah! I fired back with Ember and my other attacks, and they were starting to hurt him badly when. Not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse shot at me with some sort of web-like net. Hey, not fair. Weezing shot out a large ball of pure poison that hit me head on. This caused me to be extremely low on hearts. What do I do? But before I even had a chance to think, a Pokeball started to fly right towards me. No! That Charmeleon really thinks he can get away and stop me? Hey, you! Get back to work! Rawr! I may be the strongest Gyarados now, but it's not enough! Once this machine is complete, I will be unstoppable! On days 27 to 29, I woke up inside of a strange metallic sphere. No, I'm in a Pokeball. I gotta get out of here. I launched attack after attack at the walls, but nothing was working. Just then, I noticed a very large button. Ha, I blasted it with dragon's breath. But still, nothing. Come on, there has to be something. Wait, are those turned off? Batteries? I bet these power up the Pokeball. I focused my Dragon's Breath attack at one of them and unleashed as much as I could, but I missed. Come on, you got this. I blasted the battery again, and this time my attack hit and filled them with power. Yes! After a couple more blasts, I was able to turn on all of the batteries. Because of this, the entire ball began to rumble. Here we go! On days 30 to 32, I escaped from the Pokeball and was now in an unfamiliar dark room. Am I in Team Rocket's base? Yeah, that's right. I looked over and standing inside was a cat Pokemon. Who are you? I'm Yow, the most valued member of Team Rocket. And I'm supposed to be watching you. But how did you get out? Well, actually, what I did was... Ah, zip it. Don't try and charm me. I'll never tell you where we stashed the Firestone. Wait, they brought the Firestone here. That's good to know. <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. Hey, the boss is gonna kill me. Sound the alarms! Alarms and lights then started to blast throughout the entire building. I gotta go and find that Firestone. Now, I ran as fast as I could through the halls, going through room after room in Team Rocket's base until finally I found it hidden high up in a tower, the Firestone. I ran up and grabbed it, and this caused me to grow even stronger. I gained five more hearts and fully evolved into Charizard. I even learned a new move, Air Slash. Awesome! Now, to get out of here. On days 33 to 35, I was about to escape from the Team Rocket base when I was cut off by a slender cat Pokemon. Get out of the way! They will do no such thing. I turned around towards the voice and saw a figure approaching me. It was Giovanni, the Team Rocket boss. Why are you trying to capture me? My goals are simple. I am going to build the most powerful organization in the world. And that all starts with the strongest Pokemon like you. That all won't matter if you let Gyarados' plan succeed. Can't you see that? Ha, ah, Gyarados. His mission? He's a maniac. And to think I was once his owner. Wait, you were his trainer? You're the reason he's doing all of this. You were the one who abandoned him. Perhaps, but I never once regretted throwing him back in the ocean. Because now, you will be mine. 
I turned to see Persian was rushing towards me. And out of pure instinct, I used my new move, Air Slash, to knock them out of the way. Okay, I gotta get out of here. On days 36 to 38, I made it back to my base safely, fully escaping Team Rocket. That was a little too close. I looked over and saw that the professor made it back safely. Ah, Fozo, look at you. You really evolved. And now to build your new lab. I went out and gathered enough materials to build up the professor, his very own Pokemon lab in our base. Ah, perfect. With this up and running, I can continue my research and help you get strong enough to take down Gyarados. Sounds like a plan, professor. Hey, Fozo. I looked over and coming towards me was Bulbasaur, but he looked extremely weak. Oh my God goodness. Hurry, uh, come with me. I led Bulbasaur to the Poke Center and used the machines within it to make him a potion. Well, thanks. I was trying to tell you, I found a trainer who has another Firestone. No way. Were they the ones that hurt you? <laughs> well, I tried to fight him for it, but his Pokemon was way too strong for me. Uh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to help. It's okay. Now, tell me exactly where that trainer is. On days 39 to 40, I was on my way to find the fire type trainer and notice the area getting hotter. I must be getting close. Just then, I spotted a giant facility ahead of me that had been taken over by a group of water type Pokemon. Flying up above them in the air was Gyarados. I said get my machine up and running now! Wait, he must be talking about Professor Oak's machine. I crept closer as quietly as I could, being careful not to get caught. As I did, I overheard some of Gyarados' army talking. Just one more piece for the machine, huh? Yep, then Gyarados will finally become immune to all types of Pokemon. So, that's his plan. I need to stop him. Where is the Squirtle Squad? Right here, sir. What can we do for you? I have a job for you, fine. While I'm waiting for this machine to finalize, I need you to make sure that stupid Charizard isn't still out there trying to ruin my plan! Bring him to me, alive! Aye aye! The Squirtle Squad started to leave, and I knew I had to get out of there, fast! On days 41 to 44, I ran far away from the water Pokemon until I reached the entrance of a cave where lava was pouring in from everywhere. As I stepped closer, I saw the whole floor of the cave was covered in lava. Great, now what? I then felt a sensation in my newly developed wings. Let's give this a shot. I began to fly high over the pools of lava. Woohoo! Uh, this is awesome! I had to be careful not to hit any of the streams of lava pouring through the cave. I could still get burned. I flew through and under the lava falls, following different paths of the cave until I made it to the other side. There, ahead of me, was a tall battle tower that had to have been hundreds of blocks tall. Oh my! I made my way inside and slowly all the way up to the top until finally I reached the final room Room where I saw an old man in a lab coat. Hey, um, I'm looking for this really strong fire type trainer. The man then slowly turned around to face me. Well, I don't know anyone else around here besides me, Blaine, the red hot fire type gym leader. You, you're the one who hurt my friend. <laughs> Indeed. Now, why has a Charizard come to my gym anyway? On days 45 to 47, I quickly explained to Blaine how I needed his Firestone. I need it to... Yeah, yeah. I know your little quest and the prophecy. A fire Pokemon whose flame can burn even the fiercest of waves. Yeah, and that's gonna be me. <laughs> Very well, if you want it, follow me. I followed him deeply inside of his gym and into his battlefield. The only way I'll give you this stone is if you defeat me in combat. Go Magmar! Blaine threw out a Pokeball and out came the largest Magmar I had ever seen. Whoa, have it your way. We began to fight. He would launch powerful fire blast attacks that burned right through me. Yeah! Ha! 
You think you're gonna be the savior of all the trainers and Pokemon of this world? What a joke! Magmar, finish this! As Magmar was charging up a final attack, I felt rage boiling within me. I will save everyone! Ah! I used my air slash attack harder than I ever thought I could, and it struck Magmar head on. What? I did it! On days 48 to 51, Blaine led me into another room inside of his gym. So, the Firestone is in here? Ah, yes. Not like it's useful anymore anyway. Useless? What do you mean? Take a look for yourself. Blaine pointed over to a pedestal, and sitting on it was the broken shards of a Firestone. No! I ran over and picked them all up, but they were completely shattered. But I need to put this back together. How do I do that? I did some research of my own, and let me tell you, ain't nothing but the hottest of flames can forge that thing back together. I need to find out more. Maybe Professor Oak will know. On days 52 to 53, I arrived back at my base with the broken shards of the Firestone. Professor, I need your help. What is it? Let me see. Here, take a look. The trainer said something about the hottest of flames being able to forge it back. Do you know anything about that? Hmm. Hottest of flames? Forge. Here, let me look. The professor ran to the back of his laboratory and was looking through countless amounts of paper and books until... Aha! Here, the hottest of flames. This book says that you would need a specific item called the fire core, but it seems like an extremely rare find. We have to do whatever it takes to repair it. I left the base, following the directions of Professor Oak, when suddenly... What is this? This is another successful capture by the Squirtle Squad. I looked up and saw coming around the corner was the five Squirtles I saw in Gyarados' outpost. Let me out of here. Sorry, Charizard. Lost his orders. All five of the Squirtles attacked me with water pulse at the same time. Ah! Their attacks were so strong that I felt myself grow weaker and weaker until I passed out. On days 54 to 56, I woke up inside of a much larger water prison. Ah, my head. A whole lot more than your head is going to be hurting when the boss gets here. Ah, and here he Cubs. I looked across the room, and approaching my cell was none other than Gyarados. So, you really did capture the Charizard? Good work. Yes, sir, we did. Now, about the payment we agreed on. <laughs> payment? I will repay your work by not wasting my time on you. The five Squirtles came together and stood against him. Hey, th this, th this isn't fair. I... Don't care! Gyarados released his Hyper Beam attack directly onto the Squirtle Squad. Wait! When the dust settled, there was only one of them left. <sighs> now, leave before I waste more of my moves on you. The last Squirtle ran out of the room. You are a monster! Look, I know about your trainer, Giovanni. I know that he abandoned you, and I'm sorry, but it doesn't give you the right to treat others this way. Shut up! You have no idea what it's like to be treated like garbage! I'll show you what it feels like to be nothing! Gyarados was about to unleash another attack at me. Oh, no! Suddenly, one of the walls in the room exploded with electric energy, and appearing in the newly formed hole was Pikachu. Leave him alone! On days 57 to 59, Pikachu and Gyarados began a fight in an intense battle. Pikachu would use their speed to bounce around the room and attack Gyarados with powerful electric-type attacks. This is for taking Ash from me, Thunderbolt! Yeah! Pikachu's attacks were holding him at bay. I used Fire Fang to burn the cage and break my way out. Bozo, get out of here now! What? I can't just leave you! Gyarados, continue to attack. No, Bozo, he is too strong. Go and save Ash! 
Ash save everyone! He continued to hit at Gyarados with lightning, but now Gyarados seemed like he was barely taking any damage. Ha! You used to be so much more powerful, Pikachu, but now you've lost! With one final blow, Gyarados' Hyper Beam caused Pikachu to faint! No! I took this opportunity to fly straight out of the hole in the wall. Run while you still can, Charizard. Soon, no one will be able to stop me. On days 60 to 63, I flew out into the world in search of the fire core. I have to fix this firestone so I can avenge Pikachu and stop Gyarados. I flew and flew until I found the forge that Professor Oak must have been talking about. It had tall, huge doors that led into its interior. Huh, I wonder where that fire core is. There, across from me on the other side of the room was the fire core floating over a small pool of lava. Sweet, I started to run over and grab it, but when I got close, it fell into the lava. And then bursting out of it was the forge's guardian. Whoa. Those who come to claim the hottest of flames must prove themselves worthy. It began to attack me without any remorse, and its hits were so strong. I tried to use my flight to my advantage and flew around the room, attacking from range. My dragon's breath attack was hurting him the most, so I just kept firing. I am worthy of the power of the hottest flames. Hey and with that, the guardian shrunk back down into the pool of lava and offered to me the fire core. You have been deemed worthy, Fozo, the Grand Charizard. Yes! On days 64 to 65, I brought the fire core back to the professor at our base. Ah, just what we needed. The machine should be ready to go. Professor Oak led me to where he had been building his own forge machine. And now? I threw the shards onto the forge, and everything started to glow brighter. Now hurry, use dragon's breath. I used my dragon's breath directly onto the stone, hotter than I ever had before, until... The Firestone forged back together. We did it. I picked up the stone and felt myself beginning to evolve into Mega Charizard Y. This caused me to gain five more hearts and I learned a new attack, Flamethrower. This is awesome. Yeah, but you're still not strong enough yet. I turned around to see that the last Squirtle Squad member was standing behind us. Hey. Okay, okay, okay. Just don't freak out. Why are you here? Ugh, that evil Gyarados. He faded my friends. I realized now that I was on the wrong side. What he's doing is... It's just not right. How do I know that I can trust you? Because I know exactly where the final Firestone is. And I will help you get there. The Squirtle jumped up and started to walk away from our base. I guess I don't have a choice. I followed him until we reached a clearing, revealing a tundra far off in the distance. The water Pokemon hit the stone in the tundra on its highest mountain, so the fire Pokemon wouldn't even think to check there. Wow, thanks, Squirtle. Hey, feel free to stay at our base for protection, okay? Now, it's time I find that final Firestone. On days 69 to 74, I was flying through the tundra, searching for the highest mountain. Come on, it has to be here somewhere. It then started to snow very heavily, and my wings weren't used to it at all. I have to keep searching. Help, someone, please. What was that? I flew over, only to see a small little Torchic standing on a cliffside. The snowstorm was very bad, and it had nowhere to go. Oh no! Hey, don't worry, you'll be fine. I quickly flew it to the other side of the valley, into a cave, and used Flamethrower to light up the area and provide him some warmth. That feels so much better. Why are you out here in the middle of the tundra? It's too cold for you. I was forced here. 
us fire Pokemon are starting to run out of places to go with Gyarados out and about. Yeah, no kidding. Any chance you've seen a mountain anywhere near here? Oh, definitely. There's one just north of here. Perfect. Just stay here where it's warm. Thanks. On day 75 to 80, I followed the Torchix directions and finally found it. The largest mountain in the tundra. Sweet. I flew up until reaching the top. I found there an icy cave and entered, only to see sitting inside of it was the final Firestone. Bingo! I ran up, trying to pick it up, but was knocked back by a powerful ice ability. Ah! Who did that? I looked forward, only to see a Dragonite was there, guarding the stone. Hey, I need that! Not if I have anything to say about it! Dragonite charged forward, and we clashed in a large battle. He shot out powerful ice attacks at me, and I retaliated with fire. I could tell that my hits on him were very effective, but he didn't give up too easily. Stop this! I'm trying to get the stone so I can help all Pokemon, including you. Dragonite then hit me very hard, knocking me back. Ouch! I am forced to guard this stone. Gyarados has my trainer, Lance. I am only working for him to keep him safe. Look, you can't trust him. I think both of us know that. But maybe I have an idea. What if I save your trainer? Yeah, right. I'm serious. If I bring him back to you, can I have that Firestone? The Dragonite was thinking. You know what? You have yourself a deal. On days 81 to 85, I arrived at Gyarados' empire and quickly noticed just how much it had transformed. There were new buildings everywhere, and even more trainers were throughout inside their own cells. I have to find Lance, and quick! I started to sneak my way through, searching cage after cage. Then, a large machine caught my eye, the one that Gyarados was building all along. Yes! It's finished! Oh no! He then flew over and hovered over the center. The machine turned on, causing the water to activate. Gyarados from here then began to grow larger in size, and everything around us began to storm. This isn't good. I am now truly the strongest of Pokemon. No one can take me down now. My attention then got taken away by a sick trainer inside the nearest cage. Wait, are you Lance? <laughs> Yeah, I am. And standing right next to him was Ash, Pikachu's trainer. You're that Charizard everyone's been talking about. It's not safe here. I know, but I'm breaking you two out right away. Let's go. I'll explain while we're on the way. On days 86 to 90, I brought Lance and Ash back with me high up on the Tundra Mountain. Lance! Dragonite! The two ran up to each other and reunited. They're so happy now. And to think Gyarados wants to take this away from everyone. He truly is evil. Pikachu, he would be so happy to know that you're safe now. Gyarados, he fainted him. Well, now that you have me, we can heal him and bring him back together. I was happy to hear that. And from there, I went over to collect the final Firestone. I picked it up, causing me to change one final time. I gained 10 more hearts and grew a lot larger in size, fully evolving into Mega Charizard X. I ran outside and tested my new move, Draco Meteor. I feel so strong. Do be careful, Charizard. Gyarados is way stronger than he was before. This is still a very dangerous battle. I know, but I have to try and win. On days 91 to 94, I brought Ash with me back home to base. This place is perfect. We went over to the Pokemon Center, and he put a Pokeball inside the healing station. Give it some time. I never had to heal Pikachu before. It may take a while. I walked out and noticed that Squirtle still didn't have a home. Let's change that. I got enough materials to make Squirtle his very own water-themed house. Even water Pokemon can be our friend. 
minutes. Oh, gee, thanks. Of course. It's time. Ash then threw out a Pokeball, and from it emerged out Pikachu. You're back. Oh, my Ash, you guys saved me. I'm so happy to be out of that Pokeball. I'm just happy you're okay. This is why the other trainers need to be freed. Once we are, we can heal all our Pokemon that have been fainted. Well, then, I think it's time that we stop Gyarados for good. On days 95 to 99, Pikachu, Ash, and I started to make our way back towards Gyarados's castle. And just when his base was coming into sight, Gyarados came flying up above it all. Go, you worthless water Pokemon, and stop them! The water type army started to flood out of the gates of the castle and run out into the area. I've been itching for a fight since we got out. Let's do this. I began to fly and fired down flamethrower on the water types. And I can tell that my fire was so so much hotter than before. It was actually hurting the water Pokemons. No way. Ah, it burns. Pikachu, use thunder. Pikachu. Pikachu's attacks caused a ton of the water types to faint in one blow. But more and more of the water Pokemon started to rush in. Oh no. Go, take on Gyarados now. We got from here. I'm on it. I flew above the battlefield right towards the castle. On day 100, I made my way to the top of Gyarados's castle. And there, flying at the center of it all, was Gyarados. I'll give you one more chance. It's over. No, the world will finally see me. I won't let you take this from me. We began to clash as Gyarados attacked me with Hydro Pump over and over again. He was clearly stronger than before, but I wasn't going to give up. I flew around and kept trying to burn him with my new fire attacks. Hey yeah! But he charged up other powerful attacks and started to destroy almost everything around him. Ah! His attack knocked me back down to the ground. Did you really think you would be the fire type of the prophecy? The one that would burn away the fiercest of waves? Ha! I'll show you what real power looks like. Gyarados began to charge his final move and was going to fire it directly onto me. I won't lose. I used my new move, Draco Meteor, and it crashed right onto Gyarados. This knocked him back, where I flew face to face with him like my brother did all of those days ago. Time to end this. I used Flamethrower with all of the power within me, and it felt like every Firestone I had gathered along the way empowered me. Yeah! With that, all of my flames completely fainted Gyarados, and the world of Pokemon could now live in peace.